talk about a crusher. Yes! Oh! Are you kidding me? And gone! Oh! Welcome back to the Square Red Sports Land Frank Podcast. On the list is Podcast Land Frank. We're in now in episode number 43. It's for 43 episodes through, and there's so much to go over in this action-packed episode. NBA Summer League has started, MLB playoff race heating up, and so much more. Stay tuned, Square Red Sports Land Frank, episode number 43. Let's hop into it. We'll start with episode number 43, how we always do it with their headlines. In the NBA, there is so much news. Starting off, let's talk about how Team USA, you know, Everyone doubted them, even myself a little bit at the beginning. Okay, I was in camp when they lost to Australia and Nigeria, but then I was home when they lost that first game to France, and I'm thinking, oh, no, they haven't won a game yet. Okay, they lost their first game of official games. They probably won't win gold this year, but USA bounces back. KD plays pretty much the tournament of his lifetime. Now the all-time leading scorer in Olympic history. Okay, Kevin Durant, what an Olympic time for Kevin Durant. All right, Team USA wins gold against France, 87-82. to what a game that was to watch. What a run by Team USA to defeat the odds, pretty much. They came in, heavy favorites. Bradley Beal gets COVID. Kevin Love leaves. But then they bounce back. They bring in some new guys. They bring in JaVel McGee. They bring in Keldon Johnson. And they win gold. Jason Dam, Kevin Durant, Zach Levine, Devin Booker, Chris Milton, Drew Holiday. Everybody on that Team USA team, congratulations. Winning gold. They won in 2016. They won in 2012. And they win again in the 2020 Olympics. So that was an amazing thing to see. Let's move into more things in the NBA where there's so much news, all right? NBA Summer League has officially started, everybody. And I could not be more excited, all right? The Rockets and the Cavs played yesterday, okay? And that was such a fun game. Watch. That was the most exciting Summer League game I've ever watched. And I got a lot of takeaways from it. Jalen Green will be better than Cade Cunningham in his career. He will be. All right, I'm going to say that. Not because Cade Cunningham... Had a bad game in his first game of summer league. Okay, it was because a good, that good of a game Jalen Green had. He had pretty much, I think he had 25 points. Okay, he's pure skill. All right, there was one step back three where he made it was just insane. Shot, hop, gather, pretty much everything like that. Then it was a fading uh, three point play. Okay, Jalen Green and one. What a player he's gonna be. Okay, Josh Christopher went off also in that game. But let's talk about the other side. They lost that game the Cavs. But Evan Mobley, he's a raw. But he'll be good in his NBA career, okay? That's what I saw from him. He's going to be a raw player. He's not going to average 30 points out of the gate. He's not going to average 15 points out of the gate. Maybe I can see him averaging 13 points again this season and like 9 or 10 rebounds. Okay, that's what he is. Okay, he had some big alley oops. He had some big steals. He was a good player. But, you know, there's some things he needs to work on his game. It's just it's just summer league, everybody, okay? I'm not going to overreact. Evan Mobley is going to be a great player to watch in his career. Didn't deserve to be the number one pick, which he wasn't. Number three pick where he should have been taking the third best player out of this draft class, I think he will be. I think it could be Jalen Green 1, Cade Cunningham 2, Evan Mobley 3. You just never know these things. Okay? Evan Mobley had a pretty good game in the summer league, but Jalen Green and Josh Christopher, everybody. Jalen Green's going to be a great player in his career. Jalen Green, Josh Christopher, Kevin Porter, that's going to be an amazing trio. Fierce to come. And they had Alperen Sagut, who had a great first summer league game. Okay, a great summer league game. Coming out of Turkey, great first summer league game for Alperen Sagut. Very exciting summer league to watch. Zero K, Cade Cunningham. Like I said, at 17 points, but he was pretty much inefficient that whole entire game. I think he was 5 of 17. Not a great game, Cade Cunningham. Still interesting to see. NBA Summer League is in full swing and is very, very exciting to watch. Leave in the comments section if you think Jalen Green will be better than Cade Cunningham's career. Let's move to them. We'll be where my favorite team, the New York Mets, everybody, okay? New York Mets had the division lead pretty much the whole entire season. You know, Ronald Acuna goes down for the Braves. Braves pretty much seem like they're out of it. Okay, Mets are going to win the division. They're going to go to the playoffs, everybody. They're on fire right now. Until August hit. Okay, Phillies on a nine-game winning streak right now. They swept the Mets. The Mets almost got swept by the Marlins, and they almost got swept by the Reds. My favorite team, the New York Mets. Javi Baez is playing well, but he's hurt. Okay, pretty much the only hits he's getting for the Mets... His home runs, which I'm happy about. has two home runs already with the Mets. But is that enough? He's hurt right now. Mets are depleted at shortstop. Jose Peraz is on the DL. Okay. Luis Guillorme is on the DL. Francisco Lindor is on the DL. And now Javi Baez. The Mets are super depleted at shortstop. Did they just call up Ronnie Mauricio at this point? I don't know. My favorite MLB, MLB team, New York Mets, struggling right now. 56-55. and 55, One game above 500. Three games out of the division when they went into this week pretty much. Five games above in the division. Now they're down three games. Okay, three games behind. They went into the week five games above. That's all I got to say. My favorite team, New York Mets, struggling right now. A lot of news in the MLB, which we'll go over and around the bases. That's about for the headlines this week. Leave your thoughts in the comment section.
Now, top five. This week's top five is top five college football teams heading into this season, everybody. All right, 2021 college football season. We had 2020 college football season where Alabama won the national championship. Am I ranking them at number one? Let's see. Are they in the top three? Let's see. My favorite team, Michigan, not going to be in my top five. Probably not even in the top 25. Kate McNamara, let's hope this year. J.J. McCarthy, let's hope. Alan Bowman, whoever might be a quarterback. I'm excited for my Michigan Wolverines this year. Hopefully having a good year, but they're not in my top five college football teams. Let's hop into my top five college football teams for this season. Let's get into it. Number five, Texas A&M, everybody. You can say, how? Their defense got better. Okay. Kellamond, you could say, how? Oh, he's gone. They don't have him anymore. New quarterback coming in. All right, Haynes King's going into his sophomore year. Haynes King is a more athletic Justin Fields. Yeah, you heard that, right? More athletic Justin Fields. Justin Fields is an athletic quarterback. Haynes King is more athletic. He's got a bigger arm. Haynes King was the number one quarterback prospect in the 2019 class. Haynes King is going to be an amazing quarterback for Texas A&M Aggies this year. Jimbo Fisher, in my opinion, will name him the starting quarterback for this year. And if he does, this defense, this running back core, Haynes King, they're going to be a top five team this year. They will be a lot of sites ranking them top 10, not top 5. I'm ranking them top 5. I'm not a Texas A&M fan. Not a huge one. But Haynes King is going to be a great quarterback. I'm a Haynes King fan. I'll say that. Haynes King is going to be a great quarterback for Texas A&M. It's your great running back core, great defense, Texas A&M. They can pull a few upsets. Maybe they can beat Alabama, all right? You don't know. Let's talk about that later. But number 5 team hanging to this season, Texas A&M. Number 4, the Georgia Bulldogs, everybody. JT Daniels, my second favorite quarterback in the country. Behind Cade McNamara. All right, he's hanging. He's George quarterback this year. All right, JT Daniels, probably my second favorite quarterback in the country right now. Okay, had a really good season last year, Georgia. Picked up the starting job midway through the year. Brought them to a bowl game. Won them the Peach Bowl against Cincinnati. All right, had a great game, 400 yards. George Pickens is going to come back towards ACL in spring ball, but he's coming back. He's going to come back midseason, maybe even sooner. Okay, George Pickens is going to be a great wide receiver for him this year. George Pickens had a great freshman year. And then this was his sophomore year. He had a terrible start to it. But then JT Daniels became the starting quarterback. I think it was the first drive of that game. George Pickens caught a touchdown. Never looked back. Okay. George Pickens, once JT Daniels became the starting quarterback, they picked things up. George is going to roll this season, led by Kirby Smart, that amazing defense. Number four team heading to this season, Georgia Bulldogs. Number three, Clemson. I, I'm very tempted to put Clemson at number one, but I can't do it right now. I just can't. All right. DJ Uangale, a great quarterback, a top three quarterback in college football this year. Spencer Atlee's probably number one, but he's going to be a top three quarterback. You know, when Trevor Lawrence had COVID last year, DJ Uangale played pretty well, okay? Had that game in Notre Dame, which he lost. Had a couple things to pick up against. He threw 400 yards, you could say, okay? But there were some reads he missed, okay? Some plays, third down plays, where they would have won the game if he got that first down. Okay, that's all I'm trying to say. Clemson, new quarterback coming to this year. New running back since Travis Etienne's in the NFL. Now since Trevor Lawrence also in the NFL. Now that's why I'm not putting them at number one. Number three team hanging to the country this season, Clemson Tigers. Number two, the reigning national champions are not the number one team in the country hanging to this season. And here's why. Alabama, I'm putting them at number two. You're saying, who's number one? I'll talk about that next. But the number two team in the country right now, heading to this season, in my opinion, is the Alabama Crimson Tide. Okay? Their new quarterback, Bryce Young, five-star, number two quarterback recruit, 2019 class. You can say, how? How? Bryce Young's an amazing player. was a five-star recruit. You know what? Has Bryce Young ever played a meaningful snap at Alabama? No, he hasn't. That's going to be tough to learn a new system. Running back course. Getting worse, okay? Audrey Harris is gone. They got a couple freshmen coming in. They got Trey Sanders. But just still some things to keep up on, all right? Kamaru Wynn's coming in. All right, but new running back, new quarterback. That's why I'm putting them at number two, Okay. Well, I lost a lot of talent on defense, a lot of talent. Lost Christian Barmer, I lost a couple other things. That's why I'm putting the Alabama Crimson Tide. Number two, I'm rooting for Bryce Young this year. I'm rooting for Alabama this year. Okay, I'm also rooting for my Michigan Wolverines, but Alabama, I think, maybe get back to the national championship this year. But as of right now, they're the number two team in the country, in my opinion. Now, who's number one? Oh, boy, oh, boy. Oklahoma, the number one team in the country. Spencer Rattler, quarterback, the best player in college football. I said it. Spencer Rattler is not the, just the best quarterback in college football. He's the best player in college football. That's why Oklahoma's the number one team in the country. Okay, Spencer Rattler had a real rough start last year, okay? He had a real rough start. Entering his junior year, rush, redshirt sophomore season, all right? Junior year classroom. Spencer Rattler knows the system. Third year at Oklahoma. Third year under Lincoln, Lincoln Rattley. He's going to lead them to the national championship this year. They're my national championship pick as of right now. They got a new and improved defense. Alex Grant is their defense coordinator. Okay. Lincoln Rally is going to lead this team to the national championship where they're going to win it. Okay. Great coach, Lincoln Rally. One of the best coaches in college football. Okay. No debating that. Spencer Rattler, the best player in college football. Can't debate me on that. I'm sorry, Kevin Thibodeau. I'm sorry, Bryce Young. I'm sorry, Hanske. I'm sorry, all of you. 
But Spencer Rattler is the best player in college football. I'm sorry, Georgia. I'm sorry, Clemson. I'm sorry, Texas A&M. But Oklahoma is the best team in the country. Can't debate me on it. That's about for top five this week. Leave your top five in the comment section. Now, I didn't know this week's Did You Know? That's a good one. Did you know the Yankees catcher, old catcher, Yogi Berra, won 13 World Series out of 18 years of the Yankees. Let me say that again. Won 13 World Series out of 18 seasons in the New York Yankees. The Texas Rangers have been around for 60 plus years, everybody, and they have never won a World Series. Yogi Berra won 13 World Series in 18 years. That's all you gotta say. And an MLB team, 60 years, an MLB franchise organization has never been capable of winning a World Series in 60 plus years. That's about for Dating No Speak. Leave your thoughts in the comment section. Now, MVP, LVP. This week's MVP is, it's two MVPs, cool MVPs. First MVP, Bryce Harper and the Philadelphia Phillies, everybody. Okay, Bryce Harper making a case for MVP right now. Swept my New York Mets on an eight-game winning streak right now. Okay, Philadelphia Phillies on fire right now on a huge winning streak. Same with Bryce Harper, home run streak. Phillies and Bryce Harper, MVP right now. But one more MVP I want to sneak in there. And I talked about them a lot this episode already in the headlines. The Houston Rockets. I'm not a Houston Rockets fan. I'm rooting for them right now. They hit on all of their draft picks. Alper and Sengud played amazing his first summer league game. Josh Christopher played amazing his first summer league game. Josh Christopher was a five-star recruit, and he barely even won in the first round. Amazing player, Josh Christopher. Jalen Green, number two overall pick, is going to be better than Cade Cunningham's career. Book me on that. All right? That's what it's going to be. They had an amazing draft. They're MVPs of this league with the Phillies, with Bresser. That's what it is. But now, let's hop into my LVP. It's going to pay me to say it. All right, the two times pay me to say with the LVP were was when it was Jim Harbour and my Michigan Wolverines, and now it's my New York Mets. Okay, first off, they lost Kumar Rocker because uh, Steve Cohen didn't want to sign, apparently, elbow injuries. You know, you st- Kumar Rocker's a top five pitching talent I've ever seen in my lifetime. You sign that type of player, okay? Maybe for a little bit less money than it was supposed to be. It's a very will pawn move by Steve Cohen not to sign Kumar Rocker. Yes, you got the number 11 pick next year because you didn't sign him. But what if... Kumar Rocker is healthy. What if you miss out on a talent like that? That's all I'm trying to say. Then you go on a terrible losing streak. The Mets are playing terrible right now. I really hope my Mets can pick it up. Francisco Lindor is hurt. Javier Baez or Every shortstop in the New York Mets organization pretty much is hurt right now. Terrible thing to see. That's bad for MVP LVP this week. Leave your thoughts in the comment section. Now, let's introduce our new segment that we introduced last week. Training camp talks, everybody. Okay, I'll just say it again. We're going to do this. Every single episode until the NFL season starts, Training Kid Talks. In this week's episode, in this week's segment of Training Kid Talks, I'll bring up three fantasy football players just to draft in your fantasy football league this year, three sleeper picks. And I'll talk about Josh Allen, contract, Jalen Hurts, and so much more. So let's hop into it. First thing I want to talk about, Jalen Hurts and Zach Wilson. Am I panicking? Jalen Hurts struggling in Training Kid. I'm not panicking, but I'm panicking for him because... Jalen Hurts might not get the starting job, and then knowing how crazy Nick Sirianni is, knowing how crazy this Eagles coaching staff is and organization. Okay, I'm not panicking that he's playing bad, but I'm panicking for him because he's probably not going to get the starting job now when he deserves a starting job, okay? If they get this starting job to Joe Flacco, who's not elite, who's not a good quarterback in the NFL anymore, okay? He's not a good quarterback in the NFL, Joe Flacco. He was never a great quarterback in the NFL. He's not a good quarterback in the NFL. Joe Flacco. Okay, give the job to Jalen Hurts. He's going to be, he's better than Tua Tagovailoa right now. Okay, he is. Jalen Hurts deserves to be the starting quarterback of this team. I'm not panicking right now. Now let's move to New York. Zach Wilson, am I panicking? Has Zach Wilson ever played a down in the NFL? No, he hasn't. I'm not panicking until I see him throwing a pick six, an interception, making a bad play in the NFL. I'm not going to panic. Okay, no quarterback in the Jets roster is better than Zach Wilson because none of them have ever held a snap, never thrown a ball. In an NFL game that wasn't preseason. They got Mike White, they've got James Borg, and Zach Wilson. Zach Wilson is by far the most talented out of that group. None of them have ever thrown an NFL pass in an NFL game. Let me say that again. Okay? They never have. Okay? Zach Wilson deserves to be the starting quarterback of this team, just like Jalen Hurts deserves to be the starting quarterback of the Eagles. I'm not panicking about these two. I'm not. I really am not. Okay? I'm not. Let's move over to the other New York team. My favorite New York team, my favorite NFL team, New York Giants. Saquon Barkley, star-studded running back out of Penn State. Okay, really hasn't been the same since his rookie year, but he's coming back from a torn ACL injury. Going to have a good year this year, Saquon Barkley. He just says, if he stays healthy. Coming off the PUP list this week, okay? He's going to be able to play this season. Going to be ready for week one, according to him. Now, if Joe Judge and David Gettleman let him play, that's still to be seen. But 
Just take one Barkley. He's going to have a great season this year if he stays healthy. Saquon Barkley, one of my favorite players in the NFL right now. Okay, he is. Just an interesting thing to see. Saquon Barkley come back from a torn ACL injury, second year in the NFL where he had hamstring injuries. Now his third year in the NFL, he tore his ACL. His fourth year in the NFL come up. Pretty much a make-or-break year for a running back. Okay, A fourth year for an NFL running back is a make-or-break year because if you have a bad year, you're probably not going to get your contract extension. You're probably going to get cut from your team. Just ask Todd Gurley. Okay, That's all I got to say. Saquon Barkley, my favorite NFL team, New York Giants. He's coming back. One of my favorite players in the NFL, Saquon Barkley. He's coming back. Excited to see him on the field. But let's move to another New York team, the Buffalo Bills, where they signed their quarterback, Josh Allen, to a six-year, $258 million deal. It's a good deal. It's a good deal for both sides, really, okay? It's still to be seen if Josh Allen can lead this team to a Super Bowl, win them a Super Bowl, still to be seen. But he will win them a Super Bowl one day, Josh Allen. He will be the greatest quarterback in Bill's franchise history, maybe the greatest player in Bill's franchise history. That's all I got to say right now. He will probably, by the end of his career, be the greatest player in Bill's franchise history because he's going to lead them to at least two Super Bowls, maybe three. You never know. Josh Allen, a great quarterback, mobile, strong arm, a more mobile patch from Williams, and a bigger arm than Patrick Mahomes. Is he better than Patrick Mahomes? Still to be seen. You never really know. Lost him in the AFC Championship game, so really no argument to say he's better than Patrick Mahomes. But it's an interesting thing to see. Josh Allen going over to the Buffalo Bills, staying there pretty much for the rest of his career. Six years, $258 million deal. A great deal. Maybe better than Patrick Mahomes' deal because he can at least get two or three more of those deals. Josh Allen, he can get at least two or three more $250 million deals. Patrick Mahomes, by the time his deal's up, he's going to be... 40 years old, pretty much. He's not going to be able to play football again, okay? That's what I'm trying to say. Josh Allen can pretty much earn $700 million in his career, while Patrick Mahomes can only earn $500 million because this will probably be Patrick Mahomes' only contract in that fall because his career will probably be over by the time his contract's up. That's all I got to say. Let's move to my three fantasy sleeper picks you should make in your fantasy draft this year. One's a quarterback, one's a running back, and one's a wide receiver. Let's hop in. The first quarterback I want to mention, call me crazy, Jacob Eason. All right? If Jacob Eason is a starting quarterback, I'm so high on Jacob Eason. I am, all right? He's going to be a good quarterback. He's going to throw a lot of touchdowns. They're going to feed the rock to Jonathan Taylor, to Neem Hines, and Ronald Mack. But Jacob Eason going to get a lot of touchdowns this year to Michael Pittman, who I'll bring up later. Another fantasy sleeper pick. Jacob Eason. Say you need a backup quarterback in your fantasy football league, and then Jacob Eason's still on the board. You take Jacob Eason. And then by week one, say your starting quarterback's not playing so well, put Jacob Eason in there because Jacob Eason's going to be a good quarterback in the NFL if he's a start this year. He's going to have a really good year, Jacob Beeson, in my opinion. He is. Let's move to my second fantasy football super pick, and that is Raheem Mostert, everybody. All right? Running back for the San Francisco 49ers. And let me say why. Okay? Raheem Mostert is going to be a great running back for the 49ers this year. Had a bit of an inju- injuries last year. If he can stay healthy, he'll be a top 10 running back in the NFL this year. Right? They really don't have two great quarterbacks this year. The 49ers. Okay, Trey can be a great quarterback in his career, but not this season. Jimmy Garoppolo is not going to throw a 50-yard pass every game. He's not going to throw 400 yards. They're going to feed the rock knowing Kyle Shanahan. Okay, they don't have two strong arm quarterbacks as of right now, the 49ers. Okay, if Trey Lance becomes the quarterback, they're going to lean heavy on Raheem Mostert. And at the start of the season when Jimmy Garoppolo is the quarterback, they're also going to lean heavy on Raheem Mostert. Take Raheem Mostert as one of your running backs in fantasy football this year. That's all I got to say. My second Sleeper pick fantasy football. I'll definitely be taking Raheem Mostert in my fantasy football league if he is available by the time I want to select him. Third fantasy football super pick and last. I already said it. Michael Pittman Jr. had a good rookie season last year, an amazing end to his rookie season last year. Okay. Was a great college football player. Gonna have a great season this year. Has a strong connection with Carson Wentz and Jacob Eason, whoever the starting quarterback is this year. That's all I gotta say. Michael Pittman Jr. gonna have a great year. You should make him a starting wide receiver in your league, okay? Or you can make him a backup, say, by midseason in your fantasy football league. You make him a starting wide receiver. Michael Pittman Jr., an amazing player. An amazing player. He's one of my fantasy football sleeper picks. I'm going to try and get him on my team this year. Had him on my team last year. Was an amazing player for me, okay? Especially towards the end of the season. Michael Pittman can have an amazing second-year season. Some people say he's like a Larry Fitzgerald, okay? He could be. Michael Pittman Jr., really, really good player. Really, really good player. That's bad for my three fantasy football sleeper picks I give it. Take those three players if they're available to that slot, okay? That's my advice to you, fantasy football fans. That's bad for training camp talks this week. Leave your thoughts in the comment section. Now, around the bases, everybody. This week, around the bases, there's a lot to get through. But I want to start with one dark horse team I've got to win the World Series this year, okay? The Chicago White Sox, Tony La Russa, bringing this team together. Eloy Jimenez coming back. Robert's coming back this week. White Sox. Eloy Jimenez and Luis Robert were out pretty much the whole entire season up until this week. And now they're back. And they're still a top five team in MLB. 
This is an amazing team. They're a top five team in MLB right now, the Chicago White Sox. Maybe the best team in the American League. I'm sorry, Red Sox. I'm sorry, the Rays. I'm sorry, the Yankees, who I'll bring up later in the segment. But the White Sox are going to be a dark horse to make the World Series here. Hell not. Why not win it? Okay. That's what I'm trying to say. Chicago White Sox, an amazing team this year. An amazing team. Okay. Leo Lomenez is back. Blue Robert's coming back. Pitching's coming together. Lucas G. Lito. Lance Lynn, Tony LaRusso, bringing the guys together. Got rid of your meme Mercedes, whatever happened to your meme Mercedes. Who knows? Okay, retired. The next day says he's not retiring. Ozzy Guillen goes off on him. Interesting thing to see with the White Sox this season. Adventure for the White Sox this season. Tim Anderson, reigning MVP, Jose Abreu. Right? This team's a good team. They're going to win the World Series here, in my opinion. Okay, that's all I got to say. White Sox, right now, my pick to win the World Series. You can book me on that. White Sox, dark horse to win the World Series, in my opinion. And they will win the World Series, in my opinion. Okay, now I want to go over to my New York Mets, my last mini rant in the New York Mets this episode. Okay, I'm the biggest New York Mets fan, but I do got to be a little bit biased in the right now, okay? The Mets are still being haunted by their past moves. When Zach Wheeler left the Mets' town with the Phillies, you know what Brody Van Wagenen said? He said, Zach Wheeler's not worth all that money. Zach Wheeler just complete game the Mets this week, okay? Brody Van Wagenen, you owe the Mets an apology. You owe the Mets fans an apology, and you owe Steve Cohen an apology. That's all I got to say. Brady Van Wagner made a terrible mistake by not re-signing Zach Wheeler. Zach Wheeler is a great pitcher. The ace for the Phillies this year has a run at Cy Young this year, in my opinion. Okay, he's moving up the boards. Dark Horse for Cy Young. Brandon Woodruff, Corbin Burns. Zach Wheeler's still all up there. Jacob DeGrom isn't eligible to win it anymore, unfortunately. Who knows when DeGrom's going to come back. Just, the Mets still being haunted by their terrible pass moves. That's all I gotta say. Now, let's move to their crosstown rivals, New York Yankees. When it seemed like all was going well for the Yankees, Gallo hit his first career home run with the Yankees, all right? Rizzo's been great, everything, all right? Andrew Keeney finally came together in his last start. Anthony Rizzo the next day gets coronavirus, everybody, all right? It's an interesting thing to see. Okay, it seemed like athletes weren't getting COVID anymore, but then Anthony Rizzo, his first week of the New York Yankees, playing amazing. Second week, contracts go. Going to be out for a week. Let's see how this impacts the Yankees a little bit. It's just an interesting th- thing to see. The Yankees finally starting to catch fire, and now they go down again. Anthony Rizzo catches COVID. Luke Voigt will probably be their first baseman for right now. Move now, they had DH slot. Just a very interesting thing to see. Anthony Rizzo. I was on the COVID list right now for about a week. Let's see. Let's just see how the Yankees respond to all this. Anthony Rizzo probably playing the, as the best Yankee right now. Okay, That's all I got to say for around the bases this week. Leave your thoughts in the comment section. Now, my GM hat this week. This week's my GM hat is, I'm going to be the GM of the Houston Texans, right? I'm Nick Casario this week. How would I handle this whole Deshaun Washington situation? This year, right? You got everything off the field. You got everything on the field. You got everything off the field to trades. Everything off the field legal-wise. All right? How would I assess the situation? Something's going on there, right? You don't give your star quarterback five days off in the middle of training camp. You just don't. You don't give your starting quarterback five days off in the middle of training camp if he's playing that season, Okay. If I'm the GM of the Houston Texans, I'm coming to terms with the NFL. I'm coming to terms with Deshaun Watson, saying, we're not going to fine you for not showing up this season. Just don't show up this season. Hold out, and you won't get fined. All right, just a mutual holdout, pretty much. Almost as Texans are putting him on injured reserve list if he's not injured. All right, that's all I'm trying to say. PUP list. That's all I'm trying to say. If I was the GM of Texans, that's what I would do. And then in the middle of the offseason, say trade deadline, whatever it might be, you trade Deshaun Watson. You ship him when all this stuff gets figured out, okay? That's what I'm trying to say. If I was the GM of the Houston Texans, that's what I would do. What would you do if you're the GM of the Houston Texans? How would you assess this is the Sean Watson situation? That's what I would do. Leave your thoughts in the comment section. Now, best last question of the day. This week's question today is, who will win the World Series here? I already get my pick, the Chicago White Sox. Is your pick the Dodgers? If you're crazy, is it the Mets? Is it the Yankees? Is it anybody else? Leave your answer in the comment section. That's bad question of the day this week. That's bad for Squared Sports. We'll land Frank at number 43. Thank you for tuning in. Follow Squared Sports on Instagram at Squared Sports. Follow Squared Sports on Twitter at Squared Sports. Follow Squared Sports on TikTok at Squared Sports. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review for the best sports content in the world. We'll be back here next week, episode number 44. Stay tuned.